What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to make a seamless texture out of an image for SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So this is actually one of the things we talked about in one of the live calls in my course, which I'll link to on this page. But basically the question was, how do you take an image that isn't seamless and make it a texture that you can use on your SketchUp models? And so what happens is if you bring a regular image into SketchUp, that isn't set up to be used in 3D, you can get this nasty tiling where the image repeats. Now, I will tell you that a lot of the time it's going to be easier and faster to go to a texture website and download a texture that matches up with what you're looking for. So 3dassets.one is a great place to go because it searches multiple different websites and you could look for like a wood floor or something like that. And I need to spell wood floor properly, but there's a ton of options in here that you can download. So that is my primary way of doing things like this. But sometimes you have an image that you just absolutely want to use for whatever reason. And so there's a tool that I use called Materialize that allows you to take a texture image and make it into a seamless texture. So this is basically a tool that was designed for creating materials not only for um, not only for use in 3D modeling software but also in rendering software. And so what you want to do is you want to go to this bounding box software website and download Materialize and open it up. And when you do that you're going to get a window that looks something like this. And so this is basically just kind of a 3D skin. It's designed to help you use these functions in order to create your color maps and your height maps and everything else for renderable images. Well, in this case, we need to start with the diffuse map because that's going to be the color map associated with our material. So I'm going to go to the diffuse map and I wish there were little tool tips that popped up in here, but there aren't. Um, basically, you want to click on the O for open. And so when you click on the O for open, what you want to do is you want to go find that texture image. So you can see the preview of it right here. So I'm going to pick on this and I'm going to click on select. And what that's going to do is that's going to bring this image in and you're going to be able to preview it here within materialize. Now there's an option here that we want to use called tile maps. And so tile maps is basically going to be a tool that's going to allow you to set the way the material tiles. Now, if we look at this one though, however, um, notice how it's not letting us do that. Um, one of the kind of interesting things about this is we want to add a height map first. For whatever reason, this won't work without a height map. So we're just gonna click on the option for create right here. And what that's gonna do is that's going to create a map that's basically going to be a displacement map that you can use in order to simulate ups and downs of a material inside of a rendering engine. In this case, we're just gonna kind of leave this as is. We can go back and adjust it later, but I'm gonna click on the option for set as height map. Notice how as soon as I have a height map in here, I have the ability to access my tile maps, which is really what we're looking for in this case. And so I'm gonna click on the option for tile maps right here. That's going to give me a preview of how this looks when it tiles. Now, what I wanna do though, is I want to go down to my texture tiling and I want to make this smaller. That way, what I can do is this is just allowing me to preview the way this texture is going to tile. And so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna set the texture size. Notice how this is warping our texture a little bit because that texture file is actually longer than it is wide. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set my Y to a 1024. I'm gonna leave my other one at 10 or at 2048. So I want it to be longer than it is tall. And so if you look at this, you can clearly see the tiling that's in here. And so what I wanna do is I want to adjust this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to adjust my edge fall off. And let's kind of zoom in here a little bit to take a look at what this does when we do this. And so basically what this tool allows us to do is it allows us to create a little bit of an overlap between the images and then kind of a, create kind of a fall off in there. The fall off is just making it so the change between these two isn't so pronounced. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna overlap these a little bit. So notice how as I overlap this, um, we're getting kind of an X, Y overlap like this, but then I want to adjust my edge fall off. Notice how when I adjust my edge fall off, what this is doing is this is kind of blurring the transition between those two images like this. Well, now I don't have nearly such a strong transition in here. And you can adjust 
the width of that, just notice that as you do that, you're losing some of the detail of your texture. So you don't wanna overlap it too much, but you need to have some overlap in here just to allow you to get kind of this uh, extra detail that's in here. And in the case of something like this, you might wanna overlap it far enough that you're kind of losing the additional nails in here. So maybe something like this right here. But then you can also do a Y overlap. So in this case, I've got a really dark and a really light board in here. Well, if I adjust my Y overlap like this, I can kind of set it where it transitions between those like this. So I can set it so that the next board is lighter as opposed to there being kind of a dark and a light in a singular board like this. So I'm going to adjust that up right here. And so once I've done that, you can see how there is still tiling. You can never get away from tiling um, because it's always going to be repeating an image over and over again. But you can use this in order to set the tiling between the images so that you don't have that strong seam in here, but rather just kind of a blurry repetition. And then once you're done, you just wanna click on the option for set maps. And so when you set your maps, what that's going to do is that's going to save these or adjust them inside of your maps themselves so that it's basically finalizing the changes. But now we can click on this option for save. When we do that, I'm just going to name this wood floor seamless. And in this case, you don't need to worry about the other maps because we're only worried about using this as a texture map inside of SketchUp. So if I jump into SketchUp, right, and I'm gonna draw another rectangle right here. And let's go ahead and let's do a file import. And when I click on this, I wanna make sure that I set this to import it as a texture. So I'm gonna click on import, then I can click and click in order to size it. But notice how this texture image is a lot smoother. It doesn't have that nasty seam in here. So we can use it in order to create a more realistic look. All right, and so while we're here, let's take a look at another kind of material. So in this case, I'm gonna open a material that's uh, more like a bunch of rocks, like this one right here. So I'm gonna click on select in order to open this up. Note that this is kind of a larger image, so it takes a little bit longer to load. Um, be careful with the resolutions of the images you're bringing in. But I wanna do the same thing with these rocks. So we're gonna go ahead and create a height map like this. We'll go ahead and set it as our height map for right now. We're gonna go into our tile maps. And in this case, if we look at this, and this already has our edge fall off set to one, so let's bring all of this back to zero so you can see how this would like typically tile. And in this case, this one can be square. So we can do a 2048 by 2048 and make it a little bit bigger. And we're gonna adjust our offset like this, just so we can see it a little bit better. So in this case, we've got this image in here um, that's tiling and we can go ahead and we can go within our tile maps and we can adjust our overlap like this and our overlap like this and adjust our edge fall off. So that does a perfectly acceptable job. But the problem is you've got things like rocks in here that are getting cut off. And so there's another method in here that you can use, which is called splat. And so what splat is going to do, I'm gonna adjust my edge fall off down a little bit, but what splat is going to do is it's gonna allow you to rotate the image. You can add some randomization of the rotation as well as some scale in here, but notice what that's going to do. And you can just kind of play around with these a little bit. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and crank that edge fall off up higher like this. And I'm gonna add some randomization. But notice what this is going to do is this is gonna allow you to rotate these splats in here. So it's kind of like randomly dropping them in here a little bit more. And so this actually does a pretty decent job considering what the images are. Um, you can kind of see it by rotating around here. You can hold the right mouse button in order to rotate. But one thing I will say about this, so when you're picking images, right? So if you pick an image like this one, which is the one I downloaded from Scott Webb, notice how it has a bunch of like big um, notable rocks in here. If you can find something that's got kind of some smaller rocks, so something like this or like this, um, then you're gonna have better results. This one would probably be better as well. Um, just because you've got more rocks in here, so you're not gonna be cutting off in the middle of like giant rocks or anything like that. So some images, depending on the amount of detail that you have, are going to work 
better than others. So for example, this brick material works great because there's a ton of bricks in here. So when it tiles, it's um, the, the tile edges are less of a percentage of the overall image. So if you had like a quarter of this, for example, you'd have a lot more seams where this repeats. So if you can find something that shows more of a material, you're going to get a better result. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.